Okay, this is a video I've been looking forward to filming for over three months now. Um, of course, the pandemic has uh, wreaked havoc on my productivity on these figures, but I have finally uh, finished painting uh, the 57 man roster Chicago Bears team I've been working on, like I said, for three months. So at this point, all that's left are uh, jersey decals and face masks. I'm not going to be applying chin straps to them um, for reasons. And if there's time in this video, I'll talk about that. But, uh, you know, just to review, we've already uh, done several videos on the Mean 13 figures. Now, some of them have helmet logos on them that I painted. The rest of them don't. And the reason is I'm going to be using the... Uh, uh, Chicago Bears helmet logos that uh, came with the uh, Build-A-Team kit. There's enough for 11. So two of these Mean 13 figures already have uh, the C painted on them and the rest do not. But again, they'll, they'll have uh, decals. Now all these other figures already have the logos painted on them. And uh, since this is a video about detailing, I'll walk you through the, the process on these. There's the linemen. We've already done several videos on those. And as you can see, I've used the Sharpie there on the shoulders to give a little uh, contrast to the orange stripes to make it look orange and blue. Okay. And uh, we'll skip over here to these finished figures. These are actually Tudor painted figures, you know, they, the ones that cost $15 for a set of 11. I picked these up with my original purchase of this game board so that my Steelers would have a, an opponent uh, to go up against. And, uh, you know, I did add the socks to these figures. Otherwise, these were painted by Tudor, and I added the decals and the face masks. So these 11 are complete. Now we'll uh, look at the final... Uh, completed project on all these guys, which I've been uploading videos about. We'll start here with um, uh, the runner figures, or the sprinters actually, I think these are. I always get those two confused. These are your wide receivers and your safeties. Um, as far as detailing goes, you know, we've got the pants stripe on there. Looks okay. Not as fine, not as thin as these, but as you can see, it's a lot more visible. You can't even really see it on these figures. I did add the socks and the uh, black leggings. Um, you can see the shoulder stripes there. Used a Sharpie to uh, put that blue contrast. You know, they're around the shoulders, the stripes, the orange stripes. And I painted the uh, Bears logo. Now, I, I did that by simply taking a toothpick and within some orange paint and making a football shape. And then taking some blue paint on a toothpick and filling it in just enough to make it look like the letter C. And some of these look better than others um, as far as that helmet logo goes. We won't look at all these like we normally do. I've already done the uh, final quality control spot check on these. So all that's left on these figures is the uh, jersey decals and the black face masks, which I still need to paint those. And uh, here's a backer figure. And as you can see, uh, you know, I'm pretty, pretty pleased with this. Pretty pleased. Nothing to complain about here. Uh, here's some advice for anyone just starting out painting figures. Uh, don't measure your success or your abilities by that of the professionals on the, the MFCA uh, Facebook page. Uh, don't compare your work to that of, let's say, Emmanuel Hall or Brandon Sigers or Richard Caldwell. Because if you're just starting out, their work is better than anything you can possibly achieve. That's years of expertise you're seeing on those photographs on the MFCA page. Don't, don't set your expectations that high. Instead, you should set your expectations based upon your previous work, your own previous projects. If 
your latest batch of electric football figures look better than the previous batch, then you have achieved success. No matter how marginal, that's what you should be looking at. I'm going to look at one more of these. You can see the highlighting on the shoulder stripes got a little heavy. And I think the reason for that is because the ink's running dry in my Sharpie. And so I had to press down a little harder. They look good. I mean, that figure looks great. Uh, he's obviously going to be a either a, a outside linebacker or an offensive tackler, perhaps a defensive end. Yeah. You could even make a case for making this guy a fullback. Looks real good. But again, uh, I can't emphasize that enough. Um, to become a true artisan of figure making is, is clearly going to take years and years of practice. I'm happy with these figures because they look better than my uh, away team Steelers figures, which in turn look better than my home team Steelers figures. With each project, I'm, I'm learning new techniques. That uh, I wouldn't say it's speeding up this process. Again, these took three months, but um, I'm just really pleased with the uh, visual results. Now I want to talk a little about sealing, which is the final step in creating a figure. As we look at this guy. There we go. That's how I should be doing this, contrasting it against the football field there. Pretty good Chicago logos, wouldn't you agree? This one's probably a little better than that one. Hand painted. I mean, that's the that's the amazing thing about this. Um, the fact that I can take a toothpick and recreate the Chicago Bears helmet logos. That's actually pretty amazing. But let me uh, reach back here and show you what I use to seal. This is, this is just Tudor Games brush sealer. And it comes in, I think, a half ounce bottle here. And this is almost gone, but let me tell you something. This bottle has painted three squads of 57, or has sealed three different squads of 57 players each. So this, you know, you get your bang for your buck out of this, as long as you don't use too much of it. And let me show you what happens if you use too much. I just happen to have a, a figure here that I got overzealous with. This is one of my first efforts. And I don't know if you can see it on camera, but his arms and his parts of his helmet and his jersey are just caked in this milky white sealer that did not dry clear because I put too much on. And uh, see, the purpose of sealer is to uh, prevent uh, the paint from uh, uh, chipping off. And, uh, you know, it's certainly doing its job. It's just, I... I have uh, on good authority that over time it cures and it that milky whiteness which you may not you might be able to see it a little bit there on the elbow that does eventually go away and I'll just take you know the experts word on that but it doesn't take a lot of sealer if if you if you're beneath a strong light and uh, as you're uh, using the brush to apply the sealer as long as it looks wet that's enough as long as you know you can, and you know what I mean by that. If you can see the the paint, the the sealer glistening in the the, the overhead light, that's enough. And I always start by applying it to the base first, including the ridges and the edges, letting that dry, and then completing the task by holding it by the base and applying the sealer to the rest of the figure. And uh, now, how long should you let that dry? Probably, it doesn't take a long time. Just to be safe, though, I allowed the the upper coats, and I only use one coat to uh, to dry overnight. It, uh, no way it actually needs that long to dry, but but that's what I did. And uh, you know, once again, I am really pleased with the results. Now, just because you have a coat of sealer on these figures does not necessarily mean that it's going to totally protect a figure. I mean, if you try hard enough, you can chip the paint on these, no matter how much sealer is on the figure. I have zero doubts that that's possible. Um, at the end of the day, these are very fragile plastic figurines. So uh, you need to keep that in mind. 
especially during gameplay. I'm not suggesting that you treat, you know, you put on kid gloves and manipulate these gently and gingerly, but, um, you know, especially with the 3D printed figures that are made with some softer plastic, you, you do have to be careful. These are all, these were all made with injected mold uh, factory plastic from Tudor Games. So, you know, they are quite durable, but, you know, like I said, if you try hard enough, Certainly you can break these. Now we won't look through all these again because we've already showcased these. But, you know, I'm, I'm well pleased with the way this batch turned out. The next step, of course, is to uh, put them all over on my workstation over there. The ones that don't already have decals. And uh, start applying the decals and I'll take you through that process as well. I, I can't show you how I do it because I don't have a, anything to hold the camera while I... Uh, while I work, but I can I can describe what has happened after I've got a few of them done, and uh, we'll go from there. But I thought maybe some of the guys who've been watching my videos would be uh, maybe feel the same sort of sense of satisfaction as me, in finally seeing these figures painted. You know, the work's not done. I've still got to apply the uh, jersey numbers and the face masks. Um, but, you know, we're well over the hump. Uh, I can do all the jersey numbers in a couple days. And I can do, if I wanted to, I could do all the face masks in one day. But I'll probably stretch it out, you know. Again, you don't, you don't want to get in a big hurry nearing the end of a big project like this. In fact, you want to take your time to make sure everything's done correctly. Um, once they're finished, of course, the next step will be to... Uh, adapt this squad to my EFHL rule set. There's 57 players here. So that's a, you know, a little more than you would normally see on a on a pro team unless you count the practice squad and certainly many of them will be on members of the practice squad. And uh stay tuned for some EFHL tutorials on player rosters. That's coming up. That'll be the next thing and hopefully uh within a couple weeks I'll I'll be ready to uh demonstrate that with this team as well come up with some names for all these guys i'm not going to do a historical team uh they'll all have made up names i'll name them you know either after famous persons or or something along that line but you know now i'm going to take all these figures except for these again these 11 are finished i'm going to take all these put them back on my tray and get ready to start applying decals and i'll begin with the helmet decals for the mean 13 figures that don't have them yet Waste not, want not, and you know, there are 22 Chicago Bears helmet decals that come with that Build-A-Team kit, so, you know, I did want to make use of them. Um, all told, this is the most economical way to create teams, to, to build your football squads. Uh, it's also the most time-consuming, you know. Um, if you're going to buy the decals and the face mask and the chin straps, that's 10 it's fifteen twenty-five. That's thirty bucks right there. If you only buy decals, face masks, and chin straps, and that wouldn't even be enough for this many team players. Um, this is by far the most economical way to do it. Um, the build, you know, purchase a create a build a team kit. That's thirty bucks. That includes all the paint you need, all the decals you need, way more decals than you need, and uh, all the chin straps and face masks you need for a team a squad of 11 and it even comes with 11 unpainted figures from there you can buy a few more bags of unpainted figures paint those you'll have to get creative like i did with painting your own details like the pant stripes and the shoulder stripes and the helmet logos which with the chicago bears and the pittsburgh steelers that's real easy to do for me anyway and obviously with the cleveland browns it would be dirt simple to do you also have to take helmet stripes into account for most teams, not the Bears, but the Steelers definitely. Uh, that's a, just another technique you'll need to get good at. Um, or you can get on eBay and buy some old teams that won't be that you know with very sloppy paint jobs from the the 60s and 70s and 80s, and even the 90s. Or you can buy Tudor's pre-painted figures, modern figures, for $15 a package for 11, and then just buy the decal sheets. You're paying a lot more money that way. But, you know, nice professional quality paint job with a glossy finish on them. And, uh, of course, the other alternative is to go to the community and, and pay $300 for a, a set of highly detailed figures. Uh, 
I mean, if you can afford that, more power to you, I guess. I should say up to three hundred, and it's actually up to three hundred and fifty dollars. The prices I've seen for, uh, you know, highly detailed painted uh, game day figures or eight oh eights or um, next level authentics. You don't see a lot of Tudor figures for sale for that price. Um, but if you are looking for a, a economical step up from Tudor figures, check out Brian Nutt's uh, Pac-12 figures. The, the same molds are the same poses, and he also has a, a quarterback figure. They're just more detailed. They do cost just a little more, but not much. But by far the most economical way to, to, to build your teams is to buy some bags of Tudor figures, the Fab Fives. Or the, pro, or the mean 13s, whatever floats your boat. Paint them yourself if you've got the skill and the patience. If not, then be prepared to open your wallet. Well, all right, guys. Thanks for watching this video. And uh, I'll keep you uh, abreast on the uh, decaling and the uh, face mask application on all these figures. And then we'll, uh, we'll uh, integrate them into the uh, EFHL. Okay, have a great day. See you soon.